Well, welcome back into the Mid Norfolk Garden, and this video is going to show you about half a dozen different varieties of asters. Now, these are hardy perennials that are flowering at their peak just at this time of year. I want to try and inspire you to consider putting some of these into your garden because now's also a great time to actually find these in flower in the garden centres as pot grown specimens. And that's the best time to buy them. Uh, we find if you just go on early season varieties, they're quite often mislabeled in the garden centres. And there's quite a bit of variation even between things that are labelled as identical varieties in terms of the height, colour and flower form. So it's worthwhile if you can sourcing these out as flowering specimens and planting them directly out into the location where you want to grow them and they're pretty hardy things they will grow in most soils we've got a row of five actually along here one of which is being swamped at the end by a geranium so it's probably going to have to be moved into a different location but these are all borders identical varieties or named cultivars but they're very different just look at this one on the end and its flower form no yellow center whereas the other four a very different form. Same colour palette, very easy to mix them up and it might just be a spur with a virus or some type of variation that's caused that but again just worthwhile having a look what you're buying carefully in the garden centres and deciding what colour meets your needs. So let's go and have a look at some of the others we've got growing here. This white and yellow centre variety it's probably six and a half to seven feet tall in this position. It's been growing here for quite a few years. We've never known it to have quite the flower volume that it's got at the moment. It's a very robust and easy to divide in terms of its propagation. And it grows reliably, but quite often, and this season particularly, we thought it was going to drought quite badly. And if that happens at the wrong time, then the flower volumes could really be affected. But this one's come right back and is ploughing probably the best it's done in years. Lovely, star-shaped, white, central yellow. I've got no idea on the cultivar or variety name. This is one we've grown for decades and its name's been lost in time. But I'm sure it's available in garden centres and from specialist nurseries. This is one of the new ones we've put in this year. Beautiful, rich colour with again that characteristic yellow centre and this one we do know the name of Winston Churchill. The foliage on this has almost completely died back. This was a pot grown specimen that's been planted out and you can see the new growth already starting away for next year. That'll probably overwinter. What we'll do is cut these flowering stems back once the flower colour and buds completely finished. But they'll stand probably right to the end of November and even into early December. Lovely colour combination, this one. This one, in this light, looks slightly mauve, but it's more powder blue, in truth. This one's called Mary Ballard. Again, a medium-sized height one, growing to around 18 inches. Should form a nice compact clump after a couple of years. And hopefully we'll be able to divide this up and spread it around to form a larger area on this corner of one of the new borders. Again, characteristic yellow centre. They've almost all got this as part of their characteristic flower form. The lovely volume of decent sized flower, this one. Just let me put my hand in to give you some scale. Probably around two inches across when fully opened and really full, full double this one. Really nice plant, growing very well here. More leaf on this one, you'll note, compared to the Winston Churchill we've just shown you. It's around the corner, another one. Sheltering a bee for the night. I think he's fallen asleep in this one. Same colour palette, but much more open flower. Slightly lighter, paler blue, but again with that yellow characteristic centre. Growing same height, probably a little taller, around two foot this one, though this is in a different position with much less light, nor facing with quite a dense planting behind it, shading it from the summer sun. But growing very nicely and plenty of buds still to come on it. I don't know the name of this variety I'm afraid. It's been here for probably five or six years. 
She's absolutely made up with that cooking apple, following me around the garden as I move around to shoot these asters. Yes, very pleased with yourself, aren't you? Another one growing here, very similar aspect to the one we've just shown you, but much smaller flower. If I just put my hand in for scale, probably around centimetre to one and a half centimetres uh, single, as opposed to a, a double, although some of them are semi-double. Height, probably around 18 inches to two foot. These clumps have been here probably for around four or five years. Not a great aspect for them, but these still will flower reliably in almost complete shade. And the big one that we showed you up to seven feet in full sun here on this aspect, barely making three foot, but still flowering really beautifully and forming quite a large clump that's done extremely well in this droughted area of semi-shade over this year, which has been so difficult. And here's that large double white again, just growing almost as a monoculture in this area of a quite sheltered little bay surrounded by the brick walls. Self-supporting, it's fallen forward onto the patio, but just look at the volume of flower, really giving some distance impact. No scent off these asters, which is perhaps not in their favour, but the sheer volume and impact that you can get with these and the colour combinations that's available now commercially from the garden centres really makes them worth seeking out and considering if you've got some space in your garden for some autumn late flowering colour then these will reliably reward you by doing this year after year and they're easy to cultivate and propagate needing no special or specialist attention.